Joining me now is Major General Stephen Nordhaus, Director of the National Guard Bureau. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to be here with you, Angela Lee. Uh, we are hearing so much about the efforts of the National Guard these days, uh, you know, starting from really the start of the outbreak, uh, deploying to some of the area's hotspots, uh, whether it is through medical, uh, you know, service professionals or otherwise. Fill me in a little bit about what the latest is. Thanks for the question. It's great to be here to talk about the National Guard. Uh, we're 450,000 strong across 50 states, three territories and the District of Columbia. We currently have 46,500 guardsmen out in those uh, states and territories. And they're doing two primary missions out there right now, but a multitude of other missions as well. The two primary ones are medical uh, capacity, where we're doing testing and screening. Uh, across 1,600 test sites, we've done over 750,000 tests. And then uh, we also provide some medical care uh, along medical care facilities and nursing homes. And uh, we've cleaned over a thousand nursing homes and disinfected uh, across there. And then on the logistics side, we do a lot of logistics and distribution to help make sure our states are ready to do uh, what they need to do, whether it's uh, medical supplies or personal protective equipment. And we've also delivered uh, 44 million meals and 34,000 tons of packaged food. And this is the largest domestic response since Katrina. I was going to I was going to mention that the, the idea that we normally hear about your efforts, you know, when it comes to a, a natural disaster, whether it be a tornado or a hurricane. Um, but this seems to be such a, a wide scale uh, event. How has it been operationally to plan for this? Angelie. When I look at hurricanes, they come up the East Coast or into the Gulf, and they affect generally three to four states. This pandemic is like a tropical rainstorm to a Cat 5 hurricane across 50 states in the three territories and the District of Columbia. And each one's a little bit different. But the states, uh, through the federal support that we've received and at the direction of the governors, each governor is directing the a guardsman down at the local level to get after these things with max efficiency and put the right people in the right place to deliver the right effect at the right time. And as you know, our guardsmen generally live and work in our local communities. So when a crisis like this happens, we put on our military uniform, change out of our civilian one, put on our boots, pack a lunch, and we head out with our first responders to help our local community. Absolutely. And you're doing more things than that. I know about the, the cleaning of the nursing homes, but also making masks, if I remember correctly. There's also efforts out there in Indiana and other areas as well. So it seems like there's a broad range of efforts coming through. Um, on the ground, what are what can you say and what have you seen and what have the reports been about the case count? We know that we've been hearing from the statistics um, about what that is like, but are there hotspots that you're aware of that maybe aren't showing up on the charts? Uh, Angeli, we are really tied in very closely with FEMA and Health and Human Services. And so we get daily intel briefs and we're completely synced with the uh, Department of Defense, uh, FEMA and Health and Human Services, and then out to the local states because each one of the states, we have guardsmen in our emergency operating centers and with the Department of Public Health. And so we're really all synced and where there's little pockets that pop up, we're there to help flatten the curve. We bring guardsmen to the point of need to do either testing or help with logistics or traffic control to make sure that we can uh, get the right impact at the right place uh, and support our governors to get this uh, uh, battle, this fight against COVID-19. Speaking of those testing sites, I know that we've heard a lot about the shortages of supplies, whether you're talking about personal protective equipment or the testing material. Uh, what has that been like? Is, does it continue to be choppy delivery? Uh, for the National Guard and the test sites that we do, we get our personal protective equipment from FEMA and uh, Health and Human Services, and our uh, guardsmen have been getting their equipment and protective wear on time and the capability to do the missions that they need. need. We also work with the Department of Defense so that we're uh, uh, voicing our needs and requirements up and down, and so it's been going well for us. Meanwhile, you also do have uh, some members who have caught the virus. Um, is this also from the work that they've been doing? After uh, talking with uh, all of the states and as we hear, 
uh, the protective equipment has been working really well. And I'm seeing in some of the states, they talk about that uh, personnel doing these tests actually have a lower incident rate than the public. And so the protective equipment is working really well. In our National Guard, we're doing everything we can from telework to spacing out uh, meetings so that we only have the required number of individuals in there, uh, telecommunicating, as I said, using phone conference bridges, and then we're wearing masks uh, in our meetings as required as well, and social distancing. So we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're always on mission and able to defend uh, our homeland, uh, support our citizens, or do global missions as required by the Department of Defense. Looking ahead, we know that, you know, going back to that point of it being a natural disaster is where you're normally deployed. Right now, this is such a long term outlook. What is the what is the plan from your standpoint? Angeli, uh, we're ready to deploy when called upon. And so we're working with the services and the Department of Defense. And as we're asked in the homeland or to deploy overseas, we're doing all those things to make sure we get the right training at the right time. And we're making sure that we can deploy and be ready to go and do the mission. Do you see this going on for another year or so? As you're seeing in the news, we understand that they're working on a vaccine uh, and we're getting all the same information that everybody else is, but we're taking precautions to make sure that when called upon, whether it's hurricanes, wildfires, other domestic events, or things around the world that we're ready and prepared to do our mission when called upon. Absolutely. Well, Major General Stephen Nordhaus from the National Guard Bureau, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate the time to tell the story. The National Guard is uniquely equipped within the 50 states and three territories. Uh, we live in our communities. We grow up there. We serve side by side. And we're uh, very proud to serve our nation and our country at this time. Thanks for the time today.